So we've done our simplifying radicals, which we keep working on because some people are struggling a little bit with it. So remember to make sure you always have your charts with you, your perfect squares, perfect cubes, fourths, fifths. So those will help you with your simplifying. We were multiplying and dividing. We did our rationalizing our denominators. So today we're going to move on to adding and subtracting our radicals. So in order to add and subtract radicals, you need to have like radical terms. So what like radical terms means is that it's the same index and it's the same radicand. Same index, same radicand. So remember, index is that little number out in the front which is just telling you which root are you finding. Are you finding a square root? Are you finding a cube root, fourth root, fifth root? So that's that little number out in front. Your radicand is the number underneath the radical sign. So that number also needs to be the same. So for example, if we look at my little chart here, like radicals, these two are like radicals. They're both square roots and they have that same number underneath the radical sign of a two. Those ones are both 15s and those ones are both AB squared. So those are all right, like radicals, same index, same radicand underneath. Unlike radicals, here are some examples of unlike radicals, five and a two, x and a 3x, xy squared, x squared, y. So those aren't the same. Even though they do have the same index, they don't have the same number underneath, so those ones are not like radicals. So to add or subtract, all you do is you first make sure that they are like radicals. If they are, then you just add or subtract the numbers in front, just like you would for an x. If you're adding or subtracting x's, you just combine their coefficients. So for example, these ones right here, like radicands, so I can actually add them. So we would add the A plus the B, and then the radical would stay after it. So whatever the radical is, whether it's radical 2, radical 7, that still stays there afterwards. So you just add the numbers or subtract the numbers in front, and then keep the radical sign. So let's look at our examples. So example one, remember this radical has a one out in front of it as a coefficient. We don't always write it, but it is there. We have like radicals. Those are both the square root of two. So I can actually subtract these. So one minus three would give us a two radical two. So let's take a look at number two. Radical x, radical x, so those are the same. They are like radicals. So we're going to add the numbers in front. So what's 7 plus 15? So we got 22 radical x. Subtract from. So that means this one, the second one's going to go first you're going to subtract that first radical from it. Subtract from always means you flip those when you subtract. So 5 cube root of 2 minus 1 cube root of 2. Remember, there's a 1 in there that we don't always write. So are they like radicals? Yep, both cube roots. Both have a 2 underneath, like radicals. So let's subtract the coefficients. 5 minus 1 gives us a 4, and then the cube root of 2 after it. So 4 cube root of 2. For number 4, are all of those like radicals? No. This one's cube root, or square root of 5, this one's a square root of 5, and then we got a square root of 3. So we're going to be able to combine the ones that are the like ones. So you're going to be able to combine those square root of 5s. And then the square root of 3, you're not really going to do anything with. It's just going to kind of be hanging there afterwards. So let's deal with our 5. So we got 3 minus 1 gives us 2 square root of 5. And then as I said, that 2 square root of 3 is still going to be there, so you just write it afterwards. So it would be plus 2 square root of 3. So you have two radicals in your answer because they are not the same kind of radical. All right. Number 5, are those like radicals? No. But they're kind of bigger numbers, 63, 28. I bet you we could probably simplify these. So what is our perfect square that's going to go into 63? 9. 9 times 
7, square root of 9 is 3. So that turns into, when it's simplified, 3 radical 7. So let's do this minus the radical 28. What's our perfect square that goes into 28? 4, so we got 4 and 7. Square root of 4 is 2. So once I simplify, I got 3 radical 7 minus 2 radical 7. Now we have our like radicals. Now we can actually subtract. 3 minus 2 would give us 1 radical 7, or you could just write it as radical 7. That's the same thing. All right, let's try that next one. 48, 12, and 3. None of them are the same yet. But again, 48 and 12, those ones are kind of bigger, so it kind of gives me the feeling that we're going to simplify those. So 48, what is the largest perfect square that goes into 48? I would say largest because there's actually two perfect squares that go into 48. 16. 16 times 3. Square root of 16 is 4, so we get 4 radical 3. So then let's try to simplify that 12. That's our perfect square that goes into 12. 4. Square root of 4 is a 2. And then that minus radical 3, that one's not going to change because it's as simplified as it's going to get. There's no perfect square that goes into 3. Now we got like radicals. Now we can combine all of those. So 4 plus 2 gives us minus 1, so 5 radical 3. Because there's a 1 right here in front of this last one. Don't always write it, but it is there. All right, let's try a few more. This is where we're going to practice our simplifying skills again. 128. What is our perfect square that goes into 128? 64. We got that pretty quick. So what's the square root of 64? 8. So square root of 128 simplifies to be 8 square root of 2. Now for the 32. Our square root that goes into 32. 16. 4 is a perfect square that goes into it, but we always need the largest one, so 16 is actually the largest. Square root of 16 is 4, but i got to multiply it times that minus 2 in front of it. So that gives us a negative 8 radical 2. So then what's 8 minus 8? 0. So 8 radical 2 minus 8 radical 2 would just be 0. Alright, 8x squared. What's our perfect square in 8x squared? Not just 4. 4 is the number. 4x squared. And then 2 would be in the second one there. So what's the square root of 4x squared? 2x. And then we got our radical 2, so that simplifies to 2x radical 2. What's the perfect square from 200? 100x squared. And then we got a 2. Square root of 100? 10. So then we got 10x. Radical 2. So now we can add what's 2x plus 10x. So we got 12x. Radical 2. All right. 
looking at 9, we got an 18x under that radical, so we got to figure out what is our largest perfect square out of 18x. 9. And then 2x would be in the second one, because it's just x to the first, so I can't divide that radical, so that's not going to go with my perfect square of 9. Square root of 9 is 3, but then times that 5 that was already there in the front gives us 15 radical 2x. So in the 72, that one's actually got, I think it's three perfect squares that go into 72. So again, we got to find the largest one. Thirty-six, and then two x is in the other radical. Square root of thirty-six is. So we got six radical two x. So now we have like radicals. We got radical two x, radical two x. So we'll subtract fifteen minus six. Would give us nine. So nine square root of two x. <coughs> All right, taking a look at number 10. What's our perfect square out of 9y? The 9. 9's perfect square. Y is not. So 9 goes in the first one, y goes in the second one. Square root of 9, though, is, there's the 3. Negative 30 square root of y for that first one. Let's take a look at the second one. 36y, what is our perfect square? 36. Y goes in the second one. Square root of 36 is 6. So then times the 3, we would get 18 square root of y. And then our last one, what's the perfect square out of 50y? 25. 25, and then we got a 2y. Square root of 25 is 5, and then we got the square root of 2y. Are all three of those like radicals? No, close, but not quite. The first two are, because those are both just radical 1y. The second one is 2y, so that's different. That's not going to be combined together. So negative 30 plus 18 would give us 12 square root of y, and then it would be minus 5 square root of 2y. Or you could put the negative 5 square root of 2y first. It doesn't matter for that order. All right, two more. So for number 11, there is a perfect square within that first radical sign. We got x cubed y. So remember that x cubed, we got to break it apart into x squared and then x to the first. So we still have all three of our x's, so just we're going to put them in two different places. So then the square root of x is x. And then you bring down that 2, so it becomes 2x, radical xy. That second radical we don't need to simplify. It's already radical xy. So now we have like radicals, we can add their coefficients. So 2x plus 3x gives us 5x. And then radical xy. All right, and then our last one in our notes, we're switching it up, we're making it a cube root. So what is the perfect cube that goes into 250? Twenty-five. 
So then y cubed would go with the 125, because remember the exponents, if they're divisible by 3 for cube roots, are perfect cube. And then the 2 is going to go in the other cube root, because 125 times 2 gives us our 250. So what is the cube root of 125? 5. Divide your exponents by 3, so it becomes 5y. And then we got the cube root of 2. You got to keep remembering to write that little 3 in front of the radical sign. Some people forgot that on their last quiz. That sign has to be there. So then for 16, what's our perfect cube out of 16? 8. 8 times 2, so 8y cubed in the first one, 2 in the second one. So the cube root of 8 is 2, and then we get the y. And then we got that cube root of 2 after it, so 2y cube root of 2. So we have like radicals. They're both cube roots of 2. So we can subtract the fronts, 5y minus 2y would give us 3y cube root of 2.